you guys. Happy Thursday. Um, continue to work through this mock game week, uh, doing exactly uh, what we do in a normal game week for our kids so they can get acclimated uh, and really have been appreciative uh, to how the kids have worked. I, I told them last night after, after practice, um, this is a really neat time for us uh, and I've enjoyed it being with them um, because it's, it's kind of like time is stood still uh, and you don't get that too rarely in life. And what I mean by that is, is you know, this year is an unbelievable opportunity to go compete for a championship play with your teammates, play with your brothers, uh, and not one person's eligibility. Uh, they don't lose anything. Uh, they're just getting great development and great education uh, and a great environment to work in and, uh, and a great experience. And uh, the last five weeks uh, have been uh, really fun, to be honest with you. I love how they've competed against one another. I, I love how they have developed. I, I see our kids improving. Uh, defensively uh, in the back end. I commended the DBs last night, but it's a really neat period of time uh, because uh, when you look at the big picture of things, to be able to have a year where you can just develop as a kid uh, and it doesn't cost you eligibility, uh, pretty neat thing. Uh, and we're looking forward to the next phase of now getting the opportunity to compete. Uh, it's been a good week for us health-wise. We've gotten some kids back, uh, so I, I know I'll get these questions. So I'll give you a little bit of an update. We were able to get Josh Jackson back off a of, off of ankle. Uh, he's practiced well this week. Uh, Kanai Mawaga uh, has practiced the last two days. Uh, and has done a nice job. Drake Jackson has practiced the last two days uh, and uh, is, is feeling good. Uh, Marquis Stepp has been back, has gotten some physical contact uh, and, and really gaining confidence there. Uh, Babai has started to do uh, individual drill work uh, and uh, Gary Bryant uh, started a uh, running program and change of direction on, on the grass yesterday. It looked really, really good. So hopefully anticipating him back uh, for game week. So it's been a good week for us getting a, a little bit more healthy and getting some bodies, some bodies back. Uh, what's next for us? Um, we'll be in the Coliseum uh, on Saturday and going through our final kind of run through uh, mock game situations. Uh, one more time in the Coliseum in that environment with marketing, with their crowd noise and music and, and trying to make it as close to a game situation as possible. Um, and then we're right back on Sunday, uh, to be honest with you. We're going to uh, – Sunday will be like a Monday for us. Monday will be like a Tuesday with uh, the election day coming up. That will be an off day for us on Tuesday with no care. So um, it, it'll be an important weekend for us, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, uh, and uh, looking forward to it. So with that, I'll take any questions that you have. Okay, we'll start off with Ryan Young. Clay, to clarify on Marquise, did he have a setback after the first week of camp or so? He actually got a he actually got a little bit of a new injury with a, kind of a midfoot sprain, uh, and, and it was just a, a small uh, a small one, uh, but it was one that just needed to settle down for a second and, uh, and get some confidence back. Obviously, when you're a 230 pound man that has to stick his foot in the ground and gets hit every time you touch the ball, um, we're 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 ultra protective with him, especially coming off uh, an injury. Um, but it was a, it was a new injury uh, and, and a minor one, but he has looked phenomenal uh, the last two days and, and really has gained confidence. So uh, the next week and a half will be important to him. Uh, but uh, he looked, he, he looked like Marquise the last two days. And we talked a lot about the young offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. Have you identified which spots those guys work best at yet? I know you've been, Cross training, moving them around. Do you have a sense now yeah. for who plugs in best where? Yeah, you, you know, we've been primarily working Casey Collier at left tackle. Uh, we've worked uh, Cortland Ford at right guard, uh, Jonah Monheim at right tackle. I, I tell you what, I'll give the credit to Andrew Malek has done a nice job. We've moved him to center for the entire camp. Uh, he was really functional with the ball in his hand uh, and really provides us a, a really nice, you, you know, center option there. Um, working uh, Caden Stevens uh, also at, at, at right tackle and working Andreas to work at left guard right now. And, and Jason Rodriguez and Liam Douglas as well? Uh, Jason is working at right guard right now, and Liam Douglas has done a phenomenal job uh, at left guard. Uh, he's Him and Justin Dietich, in my mind, are 
are, are really two guys that we'll we'll probably lean on to contribute early this season. They they've uh, they've done really good work, and their maturity, both physically and mentally, has showed in this camp. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ryan Karchi. Good morning, Clay. Good morning. Uh, you talked about the players just having that extra year of eligibility and what that means for mm -hmm. them. How is that, or how do you anticipate that'll change how you guys are thinking in terms of mm -hmm. the coaching staff using players and, and maybe mm -hmm. not have to worry about, you know, redshirting guys or monitoring? Yeah, you know, it's it's a great advantage because, uh, and we actually talked about it as a staff yesterday, just out of coincidence, um, about the ability in this in this early season don't don't be afraid to use guys you know and, and be able to use our depth um, whether that's offense defense or special teams um, because in this scenario it's a little bit different I mean you could look up and you could look up and three guys you know test test positive or false positive and, and the next guy's out there uh, so to be able to get some of the, those experiences and get the jitters out before you may be called upon to be a starter uh, will be helpful. And so we actually had a conversation about that yesterday. I, I think it's a, I think it's a real advantageous period for not only staffs, but players right now that, uh, you know, to make the, the best out of this, it's really the silver lining in this whole thing uh, is one, the ability to play, but two, the ability to really develop kids uh, and have this year where, Gosh, Almighty! It'll, it'll hopefully it'll never happen again uh, in my career or anything. But it it is it's something that I can the benefit for these kids. You can see how it's helping them. And are there any positions in particular where those starting battles are you still see as kind of going on uh, even just a couple of days out from mm -hmm. game week? Yeah, I I think probably uh, to be honest with you, the the biggest thing that we're we're figuring out right now down the stretch here is probably the defensive front um, because of the youth that's on there and there's some guys that uh, to their credit are really playing well um, Marlon's brother Thule, uh it's going to be hard to keep him off the field in, in some way shape or form I mean he's gone from uh, 245 pound man to 276 uh, and it is really uh, unbelievably athletic he, um, and it has had a great camp. Uh, and so I think that defensive front, just because of the youth uh, and being able to see uh, how guys are will be the last for, last thing. And probably will play a lot of guys, you know, in that first game uh, on that front four. Okay, Adam Grossbard. Hey, Clay. I mean, we're seeing, you know, at Wisconsin, this outbreak that pretty much takes mm -hmm. out higher quarterback room like yeah. have you in camp done anything to like try to see if there's like an emergency quarterback on the roster an emergency kicker punter snapper yeah it's the the most important thing out of is is yesterday and it's daily preaching and it was probably time 752 that i've reminded of how important it is <laughs> to follow protocols and we've had an, a, a great five weeks but i actually yesterday I, I put the article of the wisconsin nebraska game being canceled and said guys you've had an amazing five weeks you've done everything your discipline has been amazing but the problem with this thing is all it takes is one moment of uh, of relaxedness and you can't get comfortable. You can't get, you can't get stagnant in this thing that, you know, every meeting you have to have your mask on. Every time we go out there, you have to follow protocol. We got to do this. We only get one shot at this, you know, and you don't want to look up and lose a game, you know, because it could hurt you in your season. And so um, for us, we have five, quarterbacks uh, right now uh, in the room um, and uh, um, you know the other guys as we had this scenario last last year Adam if you remember and the guy that uh, that we had to do some reps with was Tyler Bonds um, just to be able to get us out of a game if need be uh, hopefully we don't get to that point uh, we've got five kids that can function uh, but uh, hopefully we don't get to that point yeah Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, Antonio. Hey, Clay. You know, the past couple of months, you guys have lost Jay Tufele, Jake Lichtenstein, mm -hmm. and Trevor mm -hmm. Is, is depth on the defensive line 
a concern at all? Um, it, it, it's just maybe not depth because I think we've done a good job supplying the depth. Um, and plus with, it, you know, the way the way the system works, that outside linebacker position can also be a defensive end. So you're really looking at three guys, not four. Um, and, and so when you have that edge player that can be a Drake Jackson or a Hunter Eccles or a Malik McLean, you know, you've got some added, you got some added edge rush there. Um, but interiorly, it's really about the youth and seeing where they fit. You know, you got some experienced guys there, which we're very fortunate to have Marlon and, and Brandon Peely coming back on the interior. But then you got to figure out, you know, okay, how does a Kobe Pepe fit in? How does a Stanley uh, fit in? Where's Thule, where's Thule fit in? Uh, and some experience of, of a Caleb, uh, of a Caleb Tremblay and a Connor Murphy. So we have, we have guys because um, we've oversigned, to be honest with you, on those offense and defensive fronts to provide that depth. Thank goodness, because those names that you mentioned, most teams you lose three guys like that. You're like, oh my gosh, uh, you're a little bit worried. Um, but we have the death. It's just there's going to be a lot of men that are walking into that battlefield for the first time, you know, and how do they react to it? That's going to be the biggest thing. And and I think we'll have to, like I said, I think we'll have to play uh, some guys to kind of get a feel for who's ready for it and who's not. All right. Uh, Robert Rios, you're up. Uh, hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us. My question is, um, what do you expect from Tyler Vaughn's this season? And, um, how is positioning him with uh, Amin Ross and Brown going to help Keaton Slovis and the Trojans offense? Yeah, great question, Robert. Um, you know, one of the things that I've appreciated about this system and um, how we recruit, um, it, you, there's not just – this isn't an offense that just has one guy. Um, and, and this is an offense that spreads the ball around. You can see multiple guys. I mean, you look last year and you have – uh, a Michael Pittman at 1,300 yards. Uh, you got a 1,000-yard receiver in, in Amon Ross St. Brown, a 900-yard receiver in Tyler Vaughn's a 700-yard receiver in, in Drake London. You know, so this ball gets spread around, and that's the beauty of this thing is you can't double one guy, and Tyler's a huge part of this offense. And, you know, being being a kid in his senior year that has played since, and gosh, money played since he's a freshman, has played a lot of ball. Um, it, you know, he provides a comfort level that anytime he walks out there, you, you know, you got a chance. But when you surround him also with an Amon Ross St. Brown, a Drake London, uh, a Brew McCoy, a Gary Bryant, <laughs> uh, a Josh Jackson, uh, those running backs coming out of the backfield that are ultra dangerous catching the ball too. Um, as well as the tight end production. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I've been really impressed with our tight ends in this camp and how and and how um, uh, Graham is using him. Jude Wolf has has really come out of nowhere and provided some of uh, some big play, uh, explosive play opportunities down the field. Um, so you just can't double one guy. I think it's uh, collectively uh, it can be as good a unit uh, skill wise as there is out there. Um, and that's the beauty of this thing. You just can't double up on one person. Okay, we'll go to shotgun. Hey, Clay, uh, you know, we've seen flashes of physicality in, in past uh, training camps, and that's been the talk all this, you know, last couple of weeks. Elijah Griffin said practices are way more physical. What makes you believe you guys will be able to keep that mindset going forward this season when it's something we've kind of seen you guys back away from as the season began? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I tell you, it's been a constant theme for us each and every week, and I think consistency is going to be the key, Shotgun. Uh, I mean, it's something that – um, you know, we, it's not a, it's a little bit different season. I'll be honest with you. This is not a, uh, 14, 15 game season. You know, this is, this is a seven game season that we, after being off six months, and I, I know I said it the other day, but after being off six months, I, I really felt the biggest thing in watching games around the country was one people making self-inflicted errors and two tackling, you know, and when we approach, when we came into the camp, um, you know, we, we said, okay, hey, we don't want to beat ourselves. Uh, so our points of emphasis is going to be a physical camp uh, that involves a ton of tackling, a ton of just playing ball, putting the ball down, live scrimmage situations, because that's what we were missing. Uh, and then trying to eliminate the unforced errors uh, with turnovers and penalties. So that's been our primary focus. 
um, the consistency of that over, you know, basically six weeks. It's a six weeks short period of time uh, to try to fight for a seventh game, which is a conference championship. So um, they have been uh, a lot of padded practices. Uh, I'm appreciative of the guys because, and that I told them last night, their competitiveness and how they have approached things and how they're practicing smart. Uh, you can be physical and, and still be, still be really smart. There was a couple balls over the middle, uh, you know, Talanoa and Isaiah yesterday could have knocked uh, Bruce's whole, whole family out, <laughs> but, but they don't take that kill shot. You know, that they, 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 they come up and, and act like a pro saying, you know what, I, I could really hurt you right now, but I'm not going to do that. You're my teammate. Uh, but when you get in an inside run period or you get in a team period and you can provide that full speed uh, contact to be able to sharpen your sword, uh, iron sharpens iron and good man sharpens a good man, uh, that's going to be important for us over the next six weeks. And then on the, the offensive line, uh, you talked a little bit about the young guys. You mentioned those three mm -hmm. freshmen in particular. Do you feel like it's in, kind of an imperative to get those young guys experience this year with so many of your veterans that mm -hmm. could potentially leave after the season, even though everyone does have that extra year of eligibility? Yeah, you know what's helped Shotgun, too, and just in this situation is is really the reps are getting in practice, too. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping that they get some – I'm hoping we're in some scenarios where they get in and play. Uh, you know, I could see us maybe putting a guy in or two uh, to be able to contribute. Um, but uh, just the amount of reps they're getting in practice helps. You know, they're, they're not on a service team right now. They're actually preparing for a football game, uh, which, which helps. You know, we're in the perfect scenario. Uh, I mean, because you, you're looking at five guys that, that uh, are really veterans um, at, at the highest level, and Elijah and Andrew and, and Brett Nealon and Liam Jimmins and, and Jalen McKenzie. And then you got this just youth that the and the fall off isn't too great to be honest with you um that is really going to help us so yeah i'm hoping we're getting some scenarios shotgun that we can get them in uh but just as important they're getting those two reps in practice each and every day which a lot of times for freshman alignment just doesn't happen you know they're just not there Th this group is getting those opportunities okay uh, eric mckinney you're up uh, hey, Coach, lo looking at uh, recruiting a little bit, going back to August when that decision is, is made to postpone the Pac-12 season, w what kind of challenges was that going to present, especially when other conferences were going to play? And then how is that, I guess, alleviated or, or changed a little with now playing but not being able to, to host recruits officially or unofficially? Yeah, you know, I you know, not getting into names, Eric, but, but I, I really felt that we started off recruiting extremely strong uh, in spring and summer, um, and it was built on relationships. I thought our, I thought our coaching staff did a, a terrific job of building relationships with players and parents, and and um, uh, really their work ethic and their discipline in in the daily grind of what recruiting is um, was great. I thought we did some creative things that really helped us during this pandemic where you couldn't get face to face um, virtually um, some things that were unique and innovative. Uh, and, and then the last piece, and I'll just be honest, uh, my soul, my soul hurt w when you didn't know whether you were going to get to play or not, uh, because I was excited about this football team. And there's some, there's some big fish that are still out there that you wanted, you wanted to show your team and show what you are. Um, because that could be decisions for those guys one way or the other. Uh, and so there's an excitement right now for us as a coaching staff to be able to show who we are uh, as, a, as a staff and a new staff that has a completely different defensive staff, uh, uh, offense that's going from year one to year two. We wanted to be able to show that progression as well as new special teams uh, coordinators. So um, that was the last piece for us. And, and, uh, um, good Lord willing, uh, we do our job and, and show success. Uh, and that's a, that's a question mark uh, for a lot of those guys that are still out there on the fence, you know, being able to decide which, which way they go, you know. So um, it is important for us to play, uh, and uh, especially in recruiting, because uh, guys, guys like clarity. Uh, recruits like clarity. They like transparency. And, and they want to see the product. You know, that's just, that's just reality. So I look forward to showing them uh, who we are. Okay, we'll go to Mark Kalka now. Good morning, Coach. 
Good morning. Uh, good morning. You, you had mentioned the running backs earlier. Um, can you bring us up to speed on Keenan Christen and the, the element of speed that he brings, uh, something that's maybe been lacking, um, mm -hmm. fair or not, has maybe been some speed at the skill positions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you been seeing more influence with that uh, during camp mm -hmm. so far? Yeah. Um, when you say Keenan, the first thing that comes to my the first adjective that comes to my mind is a really fast person. <laughs> You're talking about a kid that can be 10-2 and, and, and Miss, Miss Carol, uh, Carol Smith Gilbert, our track coach, thinks he'll be a 10 flat guy before he leaves his place. Um, but you can see it on the field. His, his track speed transfer, transfers over uh, to game-like situations. And I, t I tell you where we've been using him the most, Mark, not only in the run game, but he is a tremendous pass catcher. Uh, I mean, we, we've actually lined him up as a receiver some in this camp. Uh, and he's got good route running ability. He does bring that element of speed and it is true speed. And when he outflanks the defense, you are not catching him. There's a, there, when he's even, he's leaving. I mean, there, there's, there's no catch at him. Uh, and you can have, there's been a couple times in, in camp where, uh, I mean, you, you see him even with the DB and you're, and everybody's like, all right, touchdown, Look, let's get to the next play. Cause it, it's that series is over. But um, he does bring that element of speed to us. Um, you could see what he did. He really, I'll be honest with you, one of the reasons that we were able to have a stronger second half of the season last year was because of him and the, his contribution in a hard situation. Uh, I remember in one game, him being the only scholarship back left healthy uh, and really carrying the load, if you remember, in that Arizona State game. And you got to see that speed. Uh, in that Arizona State game. So uh, we're fortunate right now. We've got good older depth um, that uh, at that running back position, and he, and he will be a contributor this year for us. Uh, back to Ryan Karchi. Clay, speaking of that running back depth, uh, in terms mm -hmm. of Marquise, since he was out for a little bit uh, out of practice, has that affected maybe his place in the rotation at all? Is that something he'll – have to sort of work his way back in early on, or do you expect he'll play a similar part in the rotation? As he would I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be all on his health, right? I mean, we know how talented a kid he is and, and everybody knows. Uh, I mean, even, even uh, Stephen Carr came up to me yesterday and said, man, coach, I'm so happy he's back because <laughs> everybody knows what he provides for us. Uh, it's, he's a rare commodity at 230 pounds with his athleticism, uh, his explosiveness, and just physicality. Uh, and, 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 and he's different. You know, he's a different back than, than the others. Um, and we got to see that in the Notre Dame game. Uh, last year, what, what he can bring to the table. Um, so I, I'm appreciative of our guys because they're very unselfish. And, and when you got a senior like Steven coming up to you, so man, I'm, I'm so glad he, he's back, Coach. Uh, you know, he, he's going to help us. Man, that, that's a big deal. And, and so um, I, I think truly it's, not, it's just going to be a matter of how confident is he um, health-wise. Uh, he looks great. Uh, he seems confident, and, and we've had discussions, but we've still got another week to go through uh, and to, to get kind of a pitch count or a rep count of what he can handle in, in, in the game, uh, first game, um, and see where his confidence level is. But uh, this week has been a major plus, plus for him and really a step forward. I know those midfoot sprains kind of linger. Is is the mm -hmm. idea that maybe you work him in a little bit more slowly? Uh, you know, we, we've limited practice to him. Uh, he's not been the full practice. Uh, we have, we have, uh, he's doing about three fourths of it right now. Um, we've tried to, uh, you know, the, the beauty of those GPS systems that each player wears, you know, the exact data real time of how many yards he's getting, uh, how many explosive movements he's doing. So we're monitoring that as long as well as bye-bye. Uh, to make sure he's not getting overworked and bringing him back in the right way. Um, and, and just, you know, uh, he's probably getting sick of me asking him a thousand times how you feel, how you feel, how you feel, how you feel. Um, but um, but I, I, being with Marquise now for years, yeah, I, I can tell his body language and, and he is gaining confidence by the day. Uh, and you can tell he's chomping at the bit to get even more. 
Okay, we're going to have to let Coach go. I know he's got a meeting to get off to. Uh, just a couple reminders on our schedule. Uh, as Coach mentioned, next uh, Tuesday is Election Day, so we are changing everything, including our media schedule, from Tuesday to Monday. So that means that, Coach, you'll join us at 745 for the first 15 minutes or so, and then we'll have uh, Graham Harrell, Keaton Slovis, and Amon Ross St. Brown for you.